Configuration of Pi Alarm Points. Now in this section we're going to discuss all those things that you need to configure in order to have an SQC alarm that resides on the Pi server and that is common to everybody who sees that server. So this is a centrally stored SQC alarm. Now one of the things that makes this a valuable thing to have on the server is the fact that everybody in the organization can see certain attributes and they can see those attributes because we store them in Pi tags. So you'll notice that we have this we have this appear in several different uh, uh, versions or several different ways to describe this. Uh, for example here you can see that we have a list of uh, different tags that are just like a laundry list we kind of say well these are the things that are needed uh, for you to have one of these real-time SQC tags. Here's some of the things that you can have in addition that are optional that would be useful to store some of this data. Well, I, I don't think this is the best place to explain this. I think the best place to explain this particular list is when we look at it conceptually in the following diagram. Because this diagram includes a very important and very important element and that is the raw data tag. That's one thing that was missing from that previous list. The raw data tag is where it all starts off. You've got some tag that you'd like to help differentiate you know, the normal variations of that tag from assignable cause variations. In order to do that you're going to be building a, a source tag that sits on the server and in addition to that source tag, some other tags that we use to store things like the uh, the control limits and the status. So let's take a look one by one at the different elements here. Now in addition to looking at them on this display, there's one other place that we're going to look at these and that is in the actual application itself. See this is this is an example of the end product. This is the alarm tag that you get when you're finished. And if I double click on it, I can start going into the edit mode for this. And this is where you would find things like the source tag, the raw data tag, the upper and lower control limit tag, the status tag, etc. So as I'm going through each one of these tags here in the next, uh, in the next few minutes, uh, please remember that each one of these corresponds to a tag that you are going to, you're going to specify the name of that tag, but we do have a nice little wizard that is going to create that tag for you. So the important thing for us to do here is to make sure you understand what tags are being created, which ones are required, and which ones are just optional. So if I can summarize, what we're going to do is we're going to use this application right here to create a an SQC alarm tag that will be stored on the Pi server and while we do that we are also going to be creating automatically a series of at least four tags. Uh, these tags are listed back here with their definitions and uh, I'm going to go through and describe what each of these tags does and which ones are optional and which ones are required. Well, here's the list of those tags that are going to be created when you create this SQC tag. I'd like to move on to the next slide and explain these using this illustration. Uh, as you can see, it all starts uh, with your raw data, which comes in in the form of a raw data tag. You do need to specify the tag whose values you're monitoring, and that's simply what the raw data tag is, the normally distributed tag that's a measure of quality that you're doing an alarm on. Now, when we have calculations such as X bar charts and range charts, those calculations are um, well, they're simple mathematical calculations of things like averages and ranges. And given the sample size of say five samples, every five samples we're going to generate a result, an average or a range in the case of a range chart. And that is what in our terminology is known as a source tag the tag in which we store the results of that calculation is the source tag. Now that is going to have, as you can see over here, it's going to have as an extension this uh, dot source. Uh, that's if you're using the auto naming convention. Now that, and that is a tag that 
we will of course historize so that at any point you can see what the derived or the calculated values were as the, as the alarm processor is running. Now, the tag that is itself an alarm tag is the tag, well, that has no automatically generated uh, suffix there or extension. In this case, the tag is called SQC sign. And as you can see by looking at the underscores here, all the other tags that are being created here are based on that naming convention. So uh, using SQC sign as the name that you choose, then we automatically create these reset tags, status tags, comment tags, source tags, etc. So this is the tag that is itself the alarm tag, the SQC alarm tag, and this is the tag that you're going to be using in the SQC client. It's the one that is going to take the digital state value of whether it's in alarm or not in alarm and what type of alarm it is. Now, in addition to those, we have the upper and lower control limit tags, and you can see these tags listed right here, UCL, CL, and lower control limit, that's the actual the upper control limit, the center line, and the lower control limit tags. And that uh, completes the list of tags that are required. As you can see, they're shown here in this illustration with a different color to indicate that they are required. So that's the, these are the tags in which we will store the control limits and the center line. So we historize those, and they will have the extensions that you see there, the UCL, CL, and LCL. Now the rest of these tags are optional as I mentioned earlier. Let's take a look at the reset tag. Uh, the reset tag is used by our client applications to put the alarm on hold or to reset it entirely. And you'll find this well documented in the SQC alarm manager documentation. We describe this as a digital tag whose value is going to be set by the client applications uh, either as a 0, 1, or 2 indicating that it's normal processing uh, on hold or clear. Of course, you can make use of this as well, but this is used by default by our client applications. And it makes use of a digital state that is installed when you first install this uh, or start up this alarm manager for the first time. Uh, it uses this Pi Alarm Control digital state set. So that's a digital tag that we use for the client applications to reset the tag or to reset the alarm. We also have a status tag. That status tag records what the uh, what set of alarms were in place at any given point and it does that through bit masking. We'll look at that in a little more detail later on. We also have a comment tag in the alarm manager. You can add comments and this is a tag it's a string tag in which those comments would be written. And we have the upper specification limit and lower specification limit uh, tags. These are tags that are optional uh, that you would use to add a, a higher a higher level of alarm uh, than, uh, than just the simple control limit. So if something is in fact out of spec then you would want to uh, flag that using these specification limits if you have such limits in your site.